How do you write? Where do you write? I have a room. It looks out on um, our backyard where the birds, there's a bird feeder. I spend a lot of time looking at birds. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people who are poets. Um, mm -hmm. And they have no sense really of, of how good or bad they are. You know, but, mm -hmm. but a lot of people write who are not um, published or at least not exposed much to, to the, the, the system. Um, and now you are a recognized poet. Um, that doesn't mean you have a, a, a contract promoting athletic shoes or anything. Not but yet. Still, I'm hoping, uh, though. Yeah, maybe British Knights <laughs> will pick you up, yeah. But um, you are recognized. You have uh, won a number of awards. You've had a grant. You've been published. Um, for somebody who is a poet and would like to get a sense of their work, um, mm -hmm. no one is expecting, I think, to make a lot of money on poetry. Mm -hmm. But um, aside from, you know, like, world of poetry uh, contests and whatnot. Um, <laughs> how would somebody um, test their poetry? Send it out. There are hundreds of small literary magazines in this country. Uh, despite the fact that poetry is almost unheard of uh, in most circles, there is an amazing underground of people that are writing and publishing each other's work. Um, you can't expect any consistent response because the taste displayed in these little magazines is as wide as the world. But that's one way. Um, I'm a believer in um, the value of an audience. I'm not a believer in writing poetry and hiding it under the mattress. Mm -hmm. I think that becoming aware that someone's listening to you is very important. It's part of the human connection of, of your impulse to write in the first place. Um, show it, uh, get involved in a writing group. I think that's a good way to start. You may not agree with what people are saying about your work, but at least you're showing, you're showing a little guts. And that's, you gotta show some guts to be a good writer anyway, so mm -hmm. you might as well give that a shot. Taking a writing course can be a way to start. Um, there are writing conferences all the time around the country. Um, those are all ways to start. They take guts, it takes a little bravery, but there can be some real rewards too. I think the best thing about getting feedback is not necessarily that you want to always please your audience, but you want to understand what they're seeing. Right. Um, maybe mm -hmm. you meant to do something and it is not connecting, and right. you should at least appreciate the impact mm -hmm. of what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Although sometimes there are those things that just please you, and that, right. that is and enough. Fine. But still. That's fine. The writer has the last word, yeah. as far as I'm concerned. Where would somebody find out, for example, the, uh, you made reference to a number of magazines, where do you find them? The um, library doesn't have them all. You know? Well, the library has Poets Market, though, which is a reference yeah. book that will list almost a, a lot of them. Writer's Market is another um, guide that you can get at the reference department of the library. Mm -hmm. uh, U of M Flint's library has quite a collection of them that they subscribe to. Um, those are good places to start, and any reference librarian can help you go from there. Now, Flint has a very healthy <laughs> poetry scene. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in fact, for a Midwestern, medium-sized, industrial, rust-belt mm -hmm. city, mm -hmm. Flint has an amazingly vibrant yes, art scene remarkable. in general. Yeah. Uh, why do you think? We have good material. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, we have good material. I think that towns that are struggling are much more interesting than towns that aren't. I think there's a lot of yearning in this town, a lot of longing to be elsewhere. That's always good material. Mm -hmm. um, uh, also, there's a sense of solidarity among the artists in this town because of the fact that we do live here, um, that it's very important to us to feel that our work is good. Um, I, think, I think Rust Belt cities have, have spawned some of the best art in the country. Uh, it's not a surprise to me. Mm -hmm. Somebody we had in the program, I asked that question, to uh, responded that uh, in other towns like San Francisco or New York or wherever, the artists are inspired by art, whereas here they're inspired by real life. I love that point. I know who said that. Yeah, yeah. and I think that's a, that's a wonderful point and it's very valid here. There doesn't seem to be the same kind of uh, backbiting here that you hear about mm -hmm. in other arts communities either. I know, I'm sure there's some, but um, people tend to feel like they have to stick together here because the art community is a small one. But yeah, yeah, I find I'm just pleased to see anybody doing anything. I just right. wish everybody, whatever mm -hmm. success they can get their mm -hmm. hands on, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, we're almost to the end of our program, and I'm wondering if there's a poem that is your favorite or one that you would like to share. We only have about a minute and a half a left. A minute? I don't know if, if I have one. That, why don't you ask me another question instead, because I don't think there's one okay. I can pick in a minute and a half. Okay. 
Um, <laughs> what have, have you not done that you want to do? I would like to uh, have a book-length um, manuscript, I think, published. I don't know if that's going to ever happen. Um, I'd like to do a Oh, I have lots of poems still to write. Um, and I'd like to... Um, I, I would like to have my poems take more chances. Um, I'd like to do... The, the term bloodletting comes to me, which sounds kind of violent as a note to end on, but I think I'd like to take more risk with my work. Mm -hmm. When you read your poetry, and Flynn has a, a, a lot of opportunities to read publicly, mm -hmm. how is that different than writing it? It's very different. You know a lot about uh, sound is everything with poetry. And when you read out loud, you know whether the sound is there or not, whether the rhythm is there. It's a delightful experience, and you often find out which poems don't work when you get in front of that audience. Now, you're married to a poet. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that you and Dan have... Uh, uh, artistic conflicts sometimes? Unfortunately, <laughs> uh, our conflicts are on other subjects. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, we have very different styles, yeah. um, but, and I think that's good because our styles, um, we, we're not writing, we can write on the same subject and come up with completely different poems. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, we don't, usually we've learned that when the other person presents a new piece of work to the other, they'll say, that's very nice. <laughs> Keep <laughs> writing. <laughs> so... <laughs> Okay. Well, we're out of time already. Um, our guest has been Jan Worth. Jan, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Michael. It's been uh, a pleasure. It, it has been fun. I've liked having you here. Um, and uh, I'm sure you'll have an opportunity to hear more of Jan's work at readings around town. Keep your eye open. Where can somebody get your book if they're interested? Um, it's at Art Source and it's at the uh, U of M Flint Bookstore. Okay. Well, I want to thank you. And this is Michael Kelly for Hometown Magazine. Good night.